Last speaker didn't show up. Let me quickly give you an introduction into Node.js. Uh, Node.js is a uh, is a application server. It's built on top of uh, as a, sorry, a Node.red is an application server that is built on top of Node.js. It has been developed in the IBM lab in Hursley. That's the guys who brought you the MQ and the MQTT protocols, and it has been contributed to the uh, um, JavaScript Foundation as a top-level project. So why would I care? So uh, Node.js runs on basically anything that has a CPU. So I run it at home as my command center uh, for, for the home automation on a Raspberry Pi. I have one instance running here locally on the, on the MacBook. I have another instance running on IBM's uh, um, cloud in, in Bluemix. And what it does, you see here a, a nice little um, sample. I have nodes on the left-hand side and I can just drag and drop them on the page and then depending on what, what I do, I straight away can, uh, can make it do things. And here's the first uh, example. I have an input. It's hard to see. It's, it's a little uh, globe that is an HTTP input. Then I process some feelings and then I have a HTTP output. Quick one, when I say I look at the, the input, double click and says it, it listens to get and it listens to the how do you uh, URL and then it just uh, puts, uh, puts the output. So that when I go there and say okay, copy, tap, flop, I need glasses otherwise I don't see anything. Oh yeah, I already have it. I said how do you, I get a little funny application, okay, uh, how do you feel? I said oh I'm feeling good and then said uh, glad you here feel good or I, you see the parameters just at the top of the URL, I said okay, I, I feel bad and I say, sorry, uh, you, you feel bad. So back, how is it done? The feelings is actually a, a subflow where I said, okay, I have an input coming in. I have a condition that says, okay, if it's missing, go to one. If it's good, go to two. If it's not good, go to three. And then I have simply a little HTML template that spits out the things I want to do. So very, very straightforward. Just track things a lot. Other thing is, Typically, I say I want to go and uh, capture a form input. I, I write a nice little HTML form and I want to store it in a database. Huh? So I'm not going to write a HTML form, but I show you what I would need to do to capture a form data into, like, say, uh, Mongo or no uh, or um, I don't like Mongo so much. I like uh, CouchDB much better. I know the guy who wrote it, so uh, it's like, like a personal favor. So I need an input. I said, okay. I need an input from HTTP, double click, I said, okay, of course, I want to watch for post, and I would say sample form, up, up, and then I said, okay, this needs to go to in a database, so I go down and said, what do I have in databases, their function, social, ah, storage, ah, okay, there is Cloudant, that's the IBM flavor of uh, CouchDB, so I send that to Cloudant, and of course, every HTTP input, you send a request, you need to get something back from a server, so I need to have an output. So where's my output? Uh, no, HTTP response. Hap, hap, and then I press deploy, and my application is done. Okay, cheated a little bit here. Uh, it straight away recognizes that uh, I have a, uh, this one is the version that runs in, in the IBM network. Uh, I have a database pre-configured. I just need to give it a name in where I want to store it. And that's, that's all I, I need to do. And I say deploy, off it goes. So that's as fast as you can go and um, uh, dip, uh, update something. This is a live running example, so I'm not going to mess it up. Um, the other, so, where do we have it? The other thing is like say, uh, we, we love um, IoT. So there, there is there is an input node that says, okay, uh, talk to the IoT network, in this case, uh, the IBM network. Uh, I catch temperature data and then, then I, I straight away can out, uh, output uh, data as well. And a little bit more tr nicer example, then we're, we're gonna have a look where does the, the stuff all come from. Um, could you could somebody humor me? So this is a, um, a little bit more uh, complex example where I said I have a 
uh, manual switches, this is for my test, then I go to a, a, a node that is called an object cleaner, I said anything in my JSON that is not bulb, just throw it away. Um, I wrote this when I was bored on a flight. Um, and then I, I can send it out, oops, I can send it out to WebSockets or I can send it out to my LED switch. Yesterday, if somebody, had, I, I talked about blinking LEDs, this one would make my LEDs blink. And then, off. let's just, for the sake of fun, uh, I go to bulb. Okay, uh, where's my mobile phone? Uh, could somebody humor me go to the, the same URL? Any mobile phone? And then go and press the off button. <coughs> Because uh, the, the light is on. Huh? Ah, now the light is off. On. Okay, I know. So what is what is doing there in this case? Uh, I use a, a simple HTTP get to get to the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fun. I know. Uh, I get to the beginning of my input. In this case, I, I allow. I have a uh, ability to take a post. I also have a ability to. Uh, to get a, uh, a get, no? switch bulb on, just listen to the bulb on URL. Any get request that comes in, buff, send it out, and there he goes. So the whole idea is you have a node. The nodes talk to each other with JSON, so they pass on a message object. The message object has various properties. The default properties is message.payload, and this is where your da data is you pass along. So uh, why is it super interesting? If you go there, there is the node-red.org. That's the that's the main page where where things uh, where node-red is described. There is detailed instructions, but the real interesting thing is is the flows. This is all the nodes that people have contributed to uh, the node-red environment. So it's not like say what what comes out of the box. If you feel like uh, I want to have something special. Uh, you will, uh, you can uh, find something here, or you can build your own. For instance, one of my little works and project, which I hadn't had time to do. You, you all know uh, the story of the Enigma and the Bomba, uh, and uh, I started to create a node that re redo uh, an Enigma. So you put a text in, you have encryption keys, and it comes uh, garbled out, or you put garble in with the right keys, it comes back out. So when I when I go there and say, okay. Uh, is there something Enigma? Uh, no, I got not Enigma. Yeah, there is it. It says Node Red contribute Enigma. Um, that's from the from what the, what the Germans used on their submarines. Uh, if you look a little bit closer, there is tons of uh, nodes ready. Um, that so there's sample flows and there are nodes ready for all sorts of. Uh, the device's uh, external endpoints. Especially when you're running on a Raspberry Pi, you have all the sensors you want to actuate with, you will find ready, ready nodes in there. So if you feel like, okay, this is nice, uh, I, I assembled something, but something's missing, um, there's instructions, it's two HTML files and one JavaScript file you need to write to create your own little node. If you publish that on, uh, on NPM, and you tag it with Node-RED contribution, it will automatically end up in that list uh, to so to make your uh, your contribution automatically available to anybody who wants to uh, wants to work. And the nice little thing is, um, how do I get it into my Node Node.js? I can simply go there and say, okay, um, configure. Oops, where is that? Manage palette. So there's all my uh, my things, and I said, okay, I want to install a new one. Anna Sela Fensen. Not, not in Nigma. So there is this, uh, this is what, ages ago. Install that. And then it's a, uh, it straight away downloads load, that to my, to my node. And then when I look around, suddenly I have, where is it? Socials. At one, where did I put it? Down here, encryption enigma, and then I can straight away go and use that uh, in my project. So 
If you want to rapidly prototype a server, uh, Node-RED is a very, very simple way. It supports all protocol, HTTP, MQTT, MQ. It has storage backends for relational, non-relational databases. Uh, the log you can express logic with little JavaScript snippets. So There's a very, very efficient way to, to make your project fly. Question that typically gets asked, they say, yeah, do I have to have this UI on the server all the time? And the answer is there, in the initial version it was the case, but they now have separated, so you can have a node red runtime, which only executes your flows, and you have a node red UI, where you can then say, I deploy flows into, um, into a running system. The next question, well, um, <coughs> by the way, there was yesterday my blinking lights node, so I pressed all the buttons and my light starts blinking. Uh, if I want to share this information, I can go, the, the simplest way is I go there and say, okay, uh, export, to the, oops, export to the clipboard, and I said the current flow, and it basically, you, you can see that this is all a big fat JSON file. In case you want to wonder, like say, so you just hit deploy button, where does my JSON get stored? Is it lost when my server shuts down? There is simply a dot node red directory in your home directory where there's a JSON file that represents the flows. And the only thing is that's a little bit odd to normal programming is that the flow also has a coordinate where the little um, node was on the screen. Well, other than that. Okay, that was the, the short and skinny on Node-RED. Um, questions? Does it generate JavaScript code out of this or, or is it like interpreting the JSON file continuously? It interprets the JSON file. So it's a, it's a runtime engine that basically takes, takes the flow JSON uh, that you generate in the visual editor and then <coughs> by, uh, more or less acts like an express middleware. So under the hood they use an express server and you can, if you want to, <coughs> put express middleware in front or uh, behind the, the Node-RED process if you want to. This is originally specifically for the Internet of Things application? It came out of the Internet of Things corner this is because, like, the Hursley, uh, the Hursley Lab in, in the UK, they deal with MQ and MQTT, so they're prime for Internet of Things. So that was the idea. But the general principle is message passing. So you have a message object with a payload, and that is passed from processing step to processing step. And what the payload does, that's up to you. So it came out from Internet of Things. It is used a lot in Internet of Things, especially with the contribution for all the sensors and actuators. But um, I've used it in uh, workflow applications for travel approvals. I used that in alerting uh, alert systems. Uh, so I get an alert in from a, from a network monitoring tool and then decide on day of time and whatever, whether I send out an SMS or an email or uh, uh, a network probe to somewhere else. So it's up to, basically up to your imagination what you want to do there. What, how much would you... Yes, this performance over that runtime engine versus native code. I have no clue. I say I haven't performance benchmarked it yet. Right. Well, I guess it's it's not that hard because I say the first impression is oh oh there's all this graphics that must be huge performance overhead. But that's the admin UI. That's not the runtime. Right. The runtime is just taking in a JSON file and based on that one picking an execution. If you if you look at the uh, at the source code, do I have a source code ready? Oh, maybe. Let me let me see quickly whether I can find one. Got five minutes. Uh, that is out GitHub. So this is, the whole thing is open source. You can just clone it, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, no, don't. Uh, where did I did I put it in there about X tough cookie? Oh, no, not not there. And we we do the other one. Um, documentation and this um, where is it? Platform API creating your first node. There you go. So that's basically um, what what a core function looks like. So I say I have. 
I define the function what I, uh, what I want to provide. This example is very similar. They take, take the input lowercase it. And then you have the, this on input and execute the function. And what the Node.js runtime does, it basically looks for this type of functions and then calls them. So the overhead is probably relatively light compared to, because uh, when, uh, when, when you write an express application, you more or less do the same thing in the middleware. So mentally, it's just another piece of middleware. Of course, if you have 10,000 steps in your flow, uh, well, that takes the, uh, takes the same uh, similar time, and then you have 10,000 pieces of middleware you hook into your uh, express application. Um, not to my knowledge, that would be a brilliant project. Um, that's that's up your alley, actually. <laughs> Okay, so, so well, let me repeat the question whether I understand. So the boil it down is, let's say, how do I do state management in the nodes? Okay, so it's a Node.js application. So they handle, they have uh, a global state object. So you have node-red.globals, and there you can put your, uh, all your states objects in there. As well as, like I say, at the end of the day, it is export a function, and you can keep a state inside a node as well. Okay. Each node also has configuration objects you can attach, so you can uh, keep a, a, a configuration object updated with, like say, specific settings or eventually state of the node. Thank you. Uh, is, I think I can run on uh, Arduino. Um, that's a good question. What is the minimum uh, system requirement for around this? Uh, Okay. So this is interacting. So the best of my knowledge, so what, what I used myself is the smallest one was a, a Raspberry Pi first generation. That's enough to run it. Of course, it doesn't run large workloads, but like I say, it was good enough to run all the lights in my home. Did you try any uh, smaller system than Raspberry Pi? Uh, uh, personally, I haven't. So. Basically, Node, uh, Node Red will run on any system that is able to run Node.js. So, because it's built on Node.js, if you get on the system, if you get Node.js to run, most likely you can run uh, Node Red as well. I mean, uh, as long as the system can install the Node.js. More, yeah. Well, I say no guarantee uh, on performance. Anyway, it's 10 bucks for a uh, Raspberry Pi Lite, so. Pfft. Okay, any more questions? So, <coughs> Okay. okay, thanks a lot. Thanks. Thank you.